cash and financial assets at the parent company level, and over $60 billion of capital that we can draw from clients to be able to invest in opportunities. We also have access to very significant pools of capital outside of that money, which includes the balance sheets of our partnerships, private fund capital, and also many of our clients wish to invest into investments with us. And this does two things. It raises further capital for larger opportunities, but it also facilitates our clients being able to invest directly into the assets that we run. And that helps them um, support their portfolios. Uh, and therefore, it's, it's very good as a client interaction. But one thing I want to make sure that we leave you with is that we never waver from our disciplined investment standards. We always try to have downside protection in the portfolio to continue to invest with a value thesis, to be patient when doing things, and to recycle capital opportunistically within the portfolio. Our integrated approach to investing has been built on a sustainable basis, and it's built into the processes we have in the portfolio. Two large groups of assets we have are very um, centered on sustainability. And we own the largest um, pure play renewable energy portfolio, which um, some of you will sit through the presentation for, of their, that company today. And we also have the largest green building portfolio certified in the world. We run a very inclusive and diverse business, which is across the world in 30 different countries. Turning just to the last 12 months, we raised $48 billion of capital, deployed $42 billion, and realized $16 billion. More important than that, significant numbers of all of those were done in the last six months under the conditions that we were under. We executed on many investment transactions to continue to deploy our funds. In India, for example, we recently completed the purchase of 160,000 uh, telecom towers for $7.6 billion, which is the largest por portfolio of telecom towers in the country. This will be a, a, a phenomenal infrastructure asset for a long period of time. We completed the property at One Manhattan West here in New York, which is on the right side of that slide. It cost us $1.8 billion to build. We financed it for $1.8 billion, and the total all-in cost on a non-recourse basis is 3%. So it was 100% financed at cost at a 3% value. This was done, more important, it was done one month ago, and it was one of the largest single asset securitizations ever done in the United States. So it shows the quality of what we own. In renewables, we completed the privatization of Terraform, which was originally purchased a number of years ago, and in total was about $11 billion of assets and increased our presence in wind, but more importantly in solar, which is going to have a significant growth over the next number of years. We expect to see attractive investment opportunities across all of our verticals. I'll mention a few. The power grid is decarbonizing, and our renewables business sees vast opportunities with that decarbonization. We're in a 100-year upgrade cycle in data infrastructure. Telecom companies need our capital, and we will continue to build out data infrastructure. 
there will be significant recapitalizations coming for the private equity business because out of this, many companies will need more capital. Demand for credit by corporations will continue to grow as stimulus winds down. And we believe that Class A real estate will always be in high demand in great cities. Low interest rates mean higher valuations for most of the assets we own. And it's merely because as interest rates go down, the next alternative is something else. And if real assets or alternatives have, have streams of income that are locked in, the valuation of those assets is going higher. So we believe as we evolve out of this cycle and interest rates continue to stay low, that there will be significant increases in values of alternatives. Looking forward, our business plan remains essentially unchanged. Last year, we spoke about a $100 billion flagship fundraising round. And we're off to a great start. We recently closed on the first round of our credit fund in Oak Tree of $12 billion. And we'll continue to um, raise in that fund and shortly launch many of the other flagships in the next round of financing. We're also progressing new strategies which could be very impactful to the franchise in years three, five, seven, and 10. Firstly, the business of investment management for alternatives is evolving very significantly. And if you go back to that chart I showed you, 5% of alternatives, uh, institutional clients only had 5% of their portfolios in alternatives 20 years ago. Today it's 25 and it's going to 60. What they need now is sometimes they want to reshuffle their portfolio. These are long-term commitments they've made. As a result of that, a whole business has emerged of secondaries and trading the uh, LP commitments that are in funds. We think this can be very significant. It's a meaningful extension for us and the business never existed before. So we think this could be a 25 to $50 billion business for us, and we've started up with uh, a number of people uh, doing this within our organization. Second, impact funds. You may have seen we brought on to, into the business Mark Carney, who is one of the leaders in impact and ESG around the world. We plan on creating a vertical of funds which will have a theme of impact investing. This is a very significant area of investment for funds for the next 25 years. We think this could be 50 to $100 billion AUM business. Third, we have dabbled in technology around the businesses that we have. What, that's, what we've learned from that is that technology is not all one thing. And many businesses in technology are turning into utilities. If you reflect back, what we own is the, is the backbone of the global economy. Many of these software and software-like services are becoming utilities, just like data infrastructure, just like toll roads, and just like other products. We think we can create over time a, a, a large business in, in buying utilities in the technology area, and this could be AUM of 50 to $100 billion. And lastly, insurance. We've been slow to insurance, largely because we believed interest rates were coming down. 
And the greatest risk was buying portfolios where you needed to earn 6%, 5%, 4%, or 3% to make your commitments on the other side. We think now, with interest rates at zero, the time is right for us to consider expanding the small insurance operations we have. Over time, we think this could be a $100 to $200 billion business for us. Before getting into the numbers with Nick, I will leave you with five simple points, um, which I largely started off with. I want to leave you with our business is stronger and more diversified than ever before. We have greater amounts of liquidity within the business. And our, our franchise and relationships we have are the best we've ever uh, been at. We are in a very low interest rate environment. And that looks like it is going to stay. And that is very, very good for our franchise in many ways. As an organization, we've successfully managed many economic disruptions. And we will manage through this one. The opportunity set we have with the verticals already is significant. We think there are adjacencies we can widen out, and that those can add to the growth of the business in years 3, 5, 7, and 10. And our liquidity is significant, and the expertise within our operating business is, is large. And therefore, we should be able to um, acquire, own, and reorganize many businesses out of this um, economic recession. So with that, I will turn it over to Nick Goodman. 